Hello Geometry Land! We are starting our last essential learning, um, which is chapter 10 a little bit and chapter 11. Um, we need to talk about some circles before we can get to finding area, uh, circumference, perimeter, volume of shapes. So we're spending a couple days on some circles. So we're talking today about lines and segments that intersect circles. And then we'll dive a little bit more into uh, what's called tangents. It is not the same as the trigonometric function tangent. And we'll get into that. So let's just start off with a uh, radius. Radius is a segment. It's a segment. Remember, segments have endpoints, right? So a segment whose endpoints are at the center and any point on the circle. So if I'm looking at my pictures over here, I am going to label this guy as my radius. And most of us already know what the radius is. The next one is a chord. A chord. Um, this is a segment whose endpoints are on the circle. All right, they are on the circle. So this right here is a chord. Chord. Um, a diameter is actually a special version of a chord. It's the chord specifically that passes through the center of the circle. That's the diameter. So this right here is the diameter. A secant. A secant is a line. All right, that means it's got arrows on the ends. All right, it's got arrows there. If you can make them a little bigger for yourself, that's fine, but they're there. A line that intersects the circle at two points. So this is a secant. A tangent. A tangent is a line. Again, that means it's got arrows at the end of it. Right? It's got arrows at the end of it. That intersects a, at a circle, excuse me, at exactly one point. At exactly one point. So that's this point right here. So this is a tangent. The point we call the point of tangency. Tangency. So that's this guy right here. It's the point of tangency. So let's just look at some circles. We've named, you know, all of our lines, special lines and segments that intersect circles. Let's look at some circles. So for this next part, um, if circles are on the same plane, they can have two points of intersection. They can have one point of intersection. We've got one here that kind of looks like a snowman with some arms, right? They intersect at a point of tangency. These circles are tangent is another way of saying it. Um, and so are these circles. So these circles are tangent as well. Their point of tangency is right here. They intersect at only one point. Or we have no points of intersection. So these two bigger circles do not intersect. And these circles right here, even though they share a center, um, they have different radiuses, different radii, and therefore they do not intersect at all either. So three different ways we can have two points of intersection, one point of intersection, or no points of intersection. Now, we want to talk about um, why we care about tangents, and there are many reasons why, uh, especially when you get into higher math, we start looking at why tangent matters and why it's super cool, and it is super cool. For us, for right now, hopefully you have a ruler handy, we are going to look at two circles, and we want to connect the centers of those circles to draw common tangents between the circles. So I am going to connect my two centers just like this. There we go. I connected them. That's what they look like. Something like that. Um, the next thing I want to do is draw the common tangents. Draw all the common tangents. Now, one thing you want to be careful of, tangents are when they only touch at one point, right? So when I put my ruler here, I'll start on this side. I want to draw it so that I only touch this top circle once and the bottom circle once. I'm not going to draw a secant like that, right? That would touch in multiple spots. 
So I want to make sure I'm only touching each circle once. And I want to see how many times I can do that. So, oof, a little off on that one. There we go. So I've got one tangent right here. It's not perfect, but you get the idea. Um, so there's one tangent that connects my circles. I can draw another one on this side. So I would line up my ruler, get it to touch exactly each circle once. So there's my other tangent. Um, these are external. They do not cross the line connecting them. So these are external tangents. I can draw internal tangents, and the internal tangents would look something like this, right? I could draw one right about here. This line touches each circle exactly once. And I could have one right about here. This line touches each circle exactly once. So how many tangents do these two circles have in common? They have two internal tangents and they have two external tangents. So that means they have four total. All right, for these two circles, the ones that overlap here, um, I start by drawing or connecting the centers. So let me connect them. There we go, like that. And then I can't draw any internal because there's no space in between these, right? They overlap. They have two points of intersection. So I can draw one external tangent over here that looks something like this. And I can draw another external over here that looks something like this. So these have two external tangents only. And then these two circles, I'm going to draw my little lines connecting their centers. They have um, one tangent, and their one tangent is right here. That's their one tangent, right? In fact, they have a point of tangency right there even. So there's one external only. There's one external only. All right, let us practice a little bit. Ooh. Ooh. There we go. I found the right paper. All right, so you are going to go through for this first one here, and you want to name two radii. All right, name two radii. Then name a secant line two different ways. Name a common tangent. Name a diameter. Name a point of tangency. And name two chords. Two chords. All right, two radii. Let's start with that one. Um, you could have gone with GJ, uh, JG, or uh, yeah, JG. Technically, that's the same one, though. Let's go with uh, KJ, or KG, excuse me, KG. And then we have BC as well. Those are the three radii that we have. Name a secant, secant. Remember, secants um, are lines that continue all the way through two different ways. So this would be AH is a secant, or line M is a secant. Those are two different ways of naming. Takes us back to chapter one a little bit, doesn't it? All right, a common tangent. Name a common tangent. So this would be, oh, I forgot to give my hats, excuse me. Uh, ED is a common tangent, or you could call it line L. That's a common tangent. Name a diameter, name a diameter. JK or KJ, either way. Name a point of tangency. So this would be point E, that's a point of tangency or point D is a point of tangency. Name two chords. Well, FN is a chord. AH is a chord. KJ or JK is also a chord. Because A and H, as long as you have the right hat, then we're talking about this segment here, not the whole line, right? That's why hats matter. Down here, draw the common tangents and tell how many exist in each diagram. Take a minute to try these four out. Take a minute to try these four out.
All right, for this one, you should have gotten two external and two internal, right? So there are four, four tangents. For this one, you should have gotten two external only. So there are two. For this one, there are none. They share a center, they have different radii, they do not intersect at all, and there's no way to draw anything in between them. So there are no tangents. And with this one, we have another two, sorry, three. We have three, because there's one internal here. They have one point of tangency right here, so we could draw one line perfectly right there. All right, please email me if you have questions. We're going to do day two tomorrow, or part two tomorrow, however you like to talk about it. All right, it's time for more fun in geometry land. We are continuing our 10.1 notes. Um, the part one of this, we talked a lot about tangents and naming different segments and lines in uh, circles. Today, we're going to really focus on tangents, all right? Tangents are very important. And remember, this is not the same as the trigonometric function tangent. That one is opposite side over adjacent in a triangle, right? This tangent is um, where we have a line that intersects uh, a circle at exactly one point, aka the point of tangency. So let's talk about some tangents uh, and some theorems about tangents in particular. The first one is a tangent line to a circle theorem. A line is tangent to a circle if and only if, remember this is very powerful, if and only if the line is perpendicular to a radius of the circle at its endpoint on the circle. So we have a radius right here. This is a tangent. And right here is a right angle. It's a right angle. This is always true. So anytime you have a point of tangency um, and you have your tangent marked, it, the radius and the tangent, will be perpendicular. They will form a nice right angle there. They will form a nice right angle there. All right, the next one, um, external tangent congruency theorem. Tangent segments for, from, excuse me, from a common external point are congruent, are congruent. So we intersect our circle here at S for tangent SR, and we intersect our circle at Q for tangent QR. So QR is congruent to SR. QR is congruent to SR, All right? So that's pretty important. Um, and we can use these to help us figure out some missing, um, some missing data, some missing side lengths in particular. So with A right here, uh, we want to find out if, and it didn't print for some reason, but it should say ST, is ST tangent to each circle? Justify your answer. So with this first one here, we know that this is supposed to be a 90, right? That angle right there should be a 90. We need to prove it. So let's think about a theorem we know that has to do with triangles, where we have three side lengths, and this whole thing right here, CT is 37. We have three side lengths, and a 90. Hopefully you all jump to Pythagorean theorem, right? A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So I know my C squared is going to be 37 squared because that's my hypotenuse, right? It's the opposite, the 90 degree angle. Our A squared, I'm just going to pick 12, why not? 12 squared plus 35 squared. And let's see what we have. Well, when we do 12 squared plus 35 squared, you get 1,369. And 37 squared is 1,369. So is this a right angle? Take a look. They are equal. Is it a right angle? 
Yes, so ST is tangent to the circle C. And this is how we name the circles. We have a little circle with a dot in the middle. Um, and we name it based upon its center point. So this is circle C. I want you to try B on your own. I want you to try B on your own. And this whole thing, SC, is 30. I know sometimes that's not entirely clear, so I want to make sure I set it. All right, you should have tried this one on your own. We have 30 squared is equal to 15 squared plus 20 squared. We want to see if that actually holds true. This 15 squared plus 20 squared gets us 625. 300 squared is 900. So in this case, ST, ooh, I forgot my hat on that one. ST is not tangent to circle C. It's not. They're not equal. It's not tangent. All right, for the next one, we know that point A is a point of tangency. We want to find radius X. We want to find radius X. So in this case, and this is where it starts getting really fun, guys, because we go all the way back to algebra with polynomials. It's great. We, again, are going to use Pythagorean theorem. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Our right angle is right here because point A is the point of tangency, and we know X is our radius. So that's our right angle, which means that our C, our hypotenuse, is X plus 8. And we have to square it. See, polynomials, isn't this great? This would be great preparation for the SBA, which we'll be taking later this month, but we don't have to deal with that right now. So um, one of our legs for our triangle is x squared, and the other one is 12 squared. I actually need to find out what this is. So x plus 8 squared is really x plus 8 times x plus 8. If you like using the acronym FOIL, first, outside, inside, last, right, we can do that. So we have x squared uh, plus 12 squared is 144. And then when I FOIL this, I get x squared plus 16x plus 64. I'm not going to go into a lot of detail about this um, because you should already know how to multiply polynomials. So FOIL, right, first, outside, inside, last. Um, again, if you need some help with that, let me know. We can set up a Google Meet. But you should know how to do that already from our lovely Algebra 1. I need to combine some terms here. So I'm going to start by subtracting x squared on both sides. So x squared minus x squared, those cancel out to 0. So I'm left with 144, and then x squared minus x squared again cancels out. So I'm left with 16x plus 64. Hey, I know how to solve this. I subtract 64 on both sides. So I get 80 is equal to 16x. When I divide by 16, I get x equals 5. So my radius for this circle is 5. All right, let's take a look at our next problem here. We know that point S and point T are points of tangency. Well, we just said that the external tangent congruency theorem says that these are going to be congruent. So we know that SR is congruent to RT. That means that 7x plus 8 is equal to 3x plus 22. I'm going to subtract 3x on both sides. And I'm going to subtract 8 on both sides. So this is gone, and this is gone. I am left with 4x is equal to 16. I divide by 4 on both sides, and x is equal to... Ooh, this is not 16. This is 14. My bad. 14. And so x is equal to 3.5. Whew, caught myself. The last problem down here. All right, the last problem down here um, is super fun. It's a little bit of a puzzle. I really like this kind. We know that each side of triangle, ABC, is tangent to the circle. So we have a point of tangency right here. We have a point of tangency right here. And we have a point of tangency right here. We want to find the perimeter of the triangle. Find the perimeter of the triangle. Now, all of these tangency uh, tangents, I should say, have 
an external common point, right? So I'm just going to ignore some of these. I'm going to cover this up for now. And if we think about point A here, because of the external tangent congruency theorem, I know that this segment and this segment must be congruent. Don't know what their length is, but I know they're congruent. So now if I cover up the other ones, I know that this segment is going to be congruent to this one over here. So this guy and this guy. I'm just marking congruencies right now. And then I can cover this up and say, well, hey, this segment and this segment are also going to be congruent. Now, I know that this is 10, which means this little guy here is 10 as well. Well, wait a second. I can figure out this length then because I have 25.6 for the whole length of CB. And if this is 10, then this right here must be 15.6. If this is 15.6, then this side must be 15.6. But wait a second. If this little guy is 15.6 and the whole thing is 28, then this must be 12.2. Oh, 12.4. Sorry, 12.4, because that's a whole number. If this is 12.4, then this must be 12.4. So if I'm looking for the perimeter, the perimeter means I have to add all sides. So let's do that. Well, I know I have 25.6, because that's CB. And then I need to add that to BA. And I need to add that to CA. BA we know is 28. And then CA is 10 plus 12.4. So when I do that, when I add all of those together, you should get 76 for your perimeter. Isn't that kind of fun? It's like a little puzzle. I like that. I have included an entire extra page of practice. So I'm going to show that to you. Um, there's an entire extra page here of practice, all right? Uh, some of these did not print so well on my paper for some reason. My printer kind of hates, um, kind of hates this. I don't know why, but it just does. Word is not its favorite thing, oddly enough, but maybe that's my Chromebook's fault. Who knows? Anyways, the ST here didn't print. Um, and all the answers are on the very bottom of the paper. <coughs> Excuse me. So you are welcome to get started on the skills practice. Um, there will be a little miniature quiz after lesson 10.2.